All right, folks, a 2022 research report showed that small business defense contractors were stunningly out of compliance with their DFARS cybersecurity requirements and woefully unprepared for CMMC. I know, real shocker, right? Anyways, two years later, and the 2024 follow-up report has expanded the aperture to look at larger DoD contractors up to 1,000 employees in size. And you would think that being gifted two extra years of additional prep time, thanks to a lengthy rulemaking process for CMMC, would make a huge difference in the numbers, and they would be vastly improved and you would be wrong. You would be very wrong. Uh, cybersecurity implementation has not improved. Compliance is still an afterthought for defense contractors. And despite high levels of awareness and support for CMMC among those responding to the surveys, a, only a single digit percent of the companies consider themselves actually ready for a CMMC assessment. And the main takeaway from the most recent report is probably the best summary for why CMMC is a thing that I have ever heard. And I quote, the majority of contractors do not have the people, processes, and technologies in place to meet the minimum cybersecurity requirements for doing business with the DOD, but often assess their companies as compliant when conducting self-assessments. The DIB respondents seem unsure about the cybersecurity requirements, but are confident that they meet them. Both of the reports contain fascinating insights into the widespread lack of preparedness in the DIB, but neither of those reports tackle the most interesting question, why? Why are things the way they are? Why is why does this persist report after report, year after year, regardless of who does the analysis or who comes up with the numbers? So we have our thoughts, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We both play golf, and uh, we both play with a group of friends, and there's always somebody that wants to join into the group with us, and they're like, man, you will not believe how good I am at golf. And so we, you know, in this digital age, make people track their scores on an app, and you may use 18 birdies plug if you want to sponsor, or you may use the grant, which I use, right? And so uh, realistically, what happens is, is we start making these people enter their scores and they're like, yeah, man, I'm shooting 75 and in golf. That's a pretty solid score for somebody that's not a professional um, and, and things like that. And then what happens is, is you're like, all right, man, well, you're pretty good. Everybody's hyped up. They're excited to play with you. You get a spot in the foursome. They come and play and it is an absolute hack fest. And that is the best way that I can describe what is happening whenever we get a report that details, hey, how are you doing with your golf game or your cybersecurity implementations? And they're like, I'm scratch, bro. And then it comes time to get on the course and something's up or we got a pulled muscle in the back or we're dipping our hip too much or uh, our hands aren't lagging. The bird right? flew overhead or I knew you were about right. to sneeze. Who and talked that's why... in my backswing? Yep. Well, who yep. talked in your assessment that got you the negative 12 score that you're averaging? And I am excited to talk about this today, buddy. Yep. Yep. Normally, normally I'm, you know, I'm breaking 90 all the time, cruising in the mid 80s. But, uh, you know, for some reason, I got a case of the shanks. I swear it's not like this all the time. Let's take a look at who we have in the golf tournament in this course, set of reports. The wife calls and she has to have you answer questions. That's two holes down the drain. We know how it yep. goes, guys. Yep. Yep. All right. So let's talk about what's in these reports. We're going to compare the data from the 2022 report and the data from the 2024 report and uh, try to tease out some interesting insights here. So both reports surveyed 300 companies with DFARS cybersecurity obligations in their DOD contracts. Over 90% of the respondents are prime contractors with direct awards from the DOD. Their DOD contracts represent around 40% of their total revenue. More than 70% of the companies uh, have their cybersecurity posture in a self-assessed state meaning they haven't had a visit from DOD auditors. So this is them conducting self-assessments and coming up with their answers. In the 2022 report, the focus was on small, uh, small business contractors. 
78% of the respondents in that report had revenue less than $5 million a year. 100% of the respondents had fewer than 100 employees. Almost a quarter of the respondents were less than 40 employees. We're talking very small companies. Whereas in 2024, the focus was on medium-ish sized contractors. 84% of the respondents there had more than $10 million in revenue, and the number of respondents was roughly split into thirds, with about a third of them having 500 to 1,000 employees, about a third having 250 to 500 employees, and about a third having less than 250 employees. And just to sort of show that these are relatively comparable sets of companies, these are, for the most part, companies that get it. These aren't random companies on the street. You sort of threw a dart and then you just decided who you were going to ask. For the most part, these companies uh, identify themselves as companies that are, they get what's going on. They, they, they understand the value of these obligations. According to the reports, 89% of the companies that are responding to these questions say that they operate in critical infrastructure sectors defined by the DOD as sectors whose assets, systems, and networks are considered so vital that their ineffectiveness or destruction would have a debilitating effect on security, national economic security, and or national public health or safety. Over 80% of respondents have actually experienced losses due to cybersecurity events. 90% of them believe that the government should mandate minimum levels of cybersecurity for all federal contractors. More than half believe that CMMC is real and is happening, and the final rule will occur in the second half of 2024, and 50-60% to 60 of them say that they are confident that DFAR's cybersecurity requirements will help improve overall IT security, national security, and supply chain security. So these are people who get it, they believe in it, they understand it. So you would think these are the people who are going to be doing it the most, right? Wrong. The numbers have gotten worse. The numbers have gotten worse over the last two years. Amazingly, in 2022, 54% of the companies that were uh, surveyed had no SPRS score whatsoever. The average score of the companies that did have an SPRS score was negative 12. This is a assessment uh, approach that scores a company it, from full implementation to have a 110 score where, down to a negative 203 if you had no controls implemented whatsoever. The average score for those that did, which was fewer than half of the companies responded, was a negative 12. Meanwhile, when you jump forward to 2024, 59% had no SPRS score, and the average score dropped down to a negative 23. A negative 23. The numbers went, went down. They got worse. And the number of companies that have specific things required by DFAR cybersecurity clauses is basically stagnated. It's completely flatlined. It's almost completely unchanged. For system security plans in 2022, 60% had one, 52% had one in 2024. For POAMs, sort of these uh, plans for implementing things that haven't been fully implemented yet, only 53% were actively working them in 2022. 49% were working them in 2024, having an SPRS score. Only 46% had one in 2022. 42% had one in 2024. How about people conducting annual incident response exercises, basically flatlined at 42% in both reports? Or how about an annual assessment of your compliance obligations for cybersecurity under DFARS? 40% in 2022, 42% in 2024. And as the reports say, more than 50% of organizations in the DIB aren't compliant with DFAR's cyber obligations that have been in place since 2017. On average, respondents believe they are about 65% prepared and only 4% believe they are completely ready for CMMC certification. So... This isn't going the way that it's supposed to be going, according to the statistics that we consistently get. We, in 2022, the numbers were slightly promising and people were less aware what, what, what we thought, at least. And a lot of the surveys that we saw at that point in time, they were less aware. The fact that 90% of the people were either aware of this, think that it's needed, and 65% think that it's beneficial no it shows that they know that this exists it's out there 
what could possibly be the problem unless they don't know exactly what out there what is out there what it is right what what could it possibly be that fully unknown or you also have to take into account maybe in some cases and, and this is again kind of, kind of going into there not knowing what's what they have to do essentially is when they're asked a question and they're like hey do you have this in certain aspects of this report they're like yeah we have that not knowing what that is and i think that yeah. that is the overall scheme here is that we see constantly what i thought would happen is is as they increase the size of the organizations and the amount of employees that there would be more competencies and skills and capa capabilities within some of those larger organizations included in the respondents and now it's noticeably worse and yeah I, that's yeah. kind of troubling yeah, one of the main takeaways from the whole thing is that the about 30% of respondents in both reports that have had external assessments do better than the companies that are self-assessed, which is another reason that goes to show that having external assessments are the better approach if you actually want this stuff to occur. And just a quick side note before we get into our theories about why this is occurring, you know, we talked about these two reports one in 2022 and one in 2024. And I just can't believe that nobody has ever noticed that these trends are occurring. I just can't believe that nobody ever knew that the state of cybersecurity in the DIB, despite having active obligations in your defense contracts, is a complete dumpster fire. I can't believe that defense contractors routinely underestimate the cost of cybersecurity uh, compliance by a factor of 10. Actually, that was in a 2018 NDAA supply chain cybersecurity report. I can't believe that not all contractors factor the cost of DFAR cyber compliance into their overhead rates. Oh, wait, that was a 2019 NDAA, NDIA small business task force report. I can't believe that nobody noticed that we're hemorrhaging data from the supply chain at an absolutely alarming rate. Oh, wait, that was the 2019 Secretary of the Navy cyber readiness report. I can't believe that almost no company has fully implemented their cyber requirements and on average implementation rates of existing requirements that have been around since 2017 never seem to crack more than 30 or 40 percent. Oh, wait, that was documented in Sarah Brin reports in 2019 and 2020. That was documented in an independent GAO analysis in 2021. That was documented in DOD inspector general reports in 2018, 2019, 2020. 2022, and 2023. And that's the, just the set of ones that I can remember off the top of my head. And this year, I can't believe that nobody noticed that DOD contractors are incredibly, stunningly, highly confident in their cybersecurity postures, despite overwhelming evidence that their cybersecurity implementations don't exist. Oh, wait, that was documented yet again in the MXD report in 2024 that we've already done a previous episode on that documented the exact same trend and findings. So why? Why is it like this? Why is it that things are the way they are, regardless of who does the analysis, regardless of who does the reports, the same requirements, the same structure, right? The same rhetoric, the same approach from DOD year after year after year. We're going on almost a decade of this now of the same findings. Why? Why, Jason, is it like this? What do you think? Uh, Jacob, the rule isn't final yet. There's nothing that tells me that I have to do it. Therefore, why, as an organization, would I proactively, I don't know, budget to protect my assets? And I say this sarcastically, but realistically, with my experience in the dip and with conversations in which I have had, at some points in time, either by choice or by force, there's no action being taken until they are forced to and there are repercussions associated with it. Now, this kind of ties back into the not knowing what the repercussions are because the whole CMMC aspect of it, if you aren't meeting the CMMC requirements, you are already violating a majority of the things in which you should be right. doing already as a as a part of DFAR 7012, right? And, and so like there's so much that goes into that, but it's again, do you know exactly what's there? And I think that it all points back to the fact of the lack of awareness. Why is there a lack of awareness? Like you said, there are years and years of reports and it's not just coming from one source, it's coming from multiple authoritative sources within the industry. 
why are people not listening? Are they not effective? Are they not on catchy podcasts with one guy with a beard and one guy that likes to tell corny jokes? I don't know, but we try our best. But yeah, yeah. I think it's just that, seriously, and we've we've talked about this a lot, Jacob. It's just the fact that like either people don't believe it's real, like it's some unicorn out in the universe, or they're like, I am not going to feed the unicorn until it's starving. Yeah. Well, I mean, then that's the thing about this report that jumps out to me is that these are people who do believe that it's real. They do think yeah. that it's going to happen imminently. Right. Uh, and yeah. yet they are still only about 65 mm, percent of the way, allegedly uh, uh, along the way to actually being ready. And I think, you know, based off my anecdotal experience, sitting in on lots of calls, talking to lots of companies, especially recently over the last 12 to 18 months, and some of the data that's in this report is it isn't just that people are waiting until that they're they're forced to do it. It's that they are waiting until the last possible moment that they can get away without doing it, right? And so these companies are saying, we're about 65% of the way to being ready for CMMC. The problem with that, as we have highlighted you know, up, down, left, right, and from as many different angles as we possibly could over the last year or so, if not longer, is that you might be 65% of the way through your implementation, but we're way more than 65% of the way through rulemaking. And so uh, you are very, very far behind. And if you don't sound like these companies in this report who know what's going on, who believe what's going on, who support what's going on, and yet they are still not fully ready to go, even though the rule is basically here at this point, uh, you are in even worse shape than what's happening. And, you know, just a quick note on that, depending on when you're listening to this, according to everything that's flying around the rumor mill and what's going on, this is probably the last podcast before the 32 CFR CMC final rule is officially published. This is probably the last industry report that will be published before the 32 CFR CMMC final rule is officially published. I mean, this is it. This is it. And it's just so, uh, I don't know, frustrating, uh, uh, poetic. I don't know what the right word is to show that the same trend has been documented in series of reports, independent reports, multiple different reports, that nothing is happening until people have the rule show up and knock on their door and it's come out right before the rule itself comes out and that's where we're at.